I feel like I want to lower expectations to start with. Um, I want to say just a little bit about myself. There's only, I think, 20 minutes for me to speak. And then I want to read a few things, which I don't like to do. It feels much less spontaneous to me. <clears throat> but um, there are a few things I do want to say, and there's so little time, I, I don't want to miss some of those important things. But just to say where I come from um, in, on this topic, uh, originally back in the early 1980s at university, I became very involved in left-wing groups, progressive politics, uh, the communists, the Trotskyists, all of those people. But I never joined any of the parties. I only participated and um, got hauled out of offices by the police, that sort of thing, without fully ever joining up. Because there's another side of me that was met much more by existential philosophy, phenomenology, which was quite radically individual and wanted to question everything. And it wanted everything to remain open to continual development and process. And some of the left-wing groups I was involved with were too collectivist. And it's almost like you had to buy the whole package in order to belong. And I just could not do that ever. So I had this split where I wanted to have some kind of social conscience and impact potentially without losing the deepest sense of myself and the fact that I exist and the fact that I will die and the fact that somehow I have to make a life as long as I'm alive. I wanted somehow to bring together the concerns, my political social concerns with a deep sense of self and self question. And the one thing that seemed to bring those two things together was focusing. Because focusing allowed me to bring to myself a radical, open, inclusive, attitude where every aspect of myself was important. Within myself, there was never a majority rule. Within myself, you would never take a vote. Within myself, the strongest voice, even a bullying voice, could never shout down the weakest, most scared part of me everything needed to be accepted. And in fact, the process of change or discovery or inquiry within me would go at the pace of the most scared part. So that could never be ruled out and somehow voted out of existence. So I began to think, could that kind of different sense of democracy, which is not a representative democracy. It's not a first past the post, as we say in the UK democracy. It's not majority rule. It is a much more consensual kind of democracy, but not consensus where everything is ground into a kind of sameness. It's a consensus where the diversity is fully valued and respected. <clears throat> Could that sense of um, individual community or atmosphere also come out into the world? Could I have relationships based upon that? Could I um, be in organizations that work that way? Is it possible that an institution of some kind could actually work on the same principles that I find inside of myself if I do something like focusing? So that was my question. <clears throat> and here's where I wanna read just a few different things. Um, some of the terms for this is experiential democracy. I don't wanna use just one term because I don't want it to become um, something that's glibly kind of talked about and the essence of it is lost. So if I use many terms and you know that all of these terms simply point towards something, it's the something it points towards that I'm 
most passionate about. So one term is experiential democracy. Another term is inner democracy, which I think focusing provides us with a kind of inner democracy, a kind of inner community where there's no majority rule. Another term is slow democracy. Another term is embodied democracy. Another term is social focusing. And another term is inner activism. So I wanna just say a couple of things. One thing that excites me about the present situation is that a lot of, especially younger people, but not just younger people, that are involved in activism finally are wanting to marry up these two sides that I always had split. So there's quite a few activists that are becoming very psychologically sophisticated. They're interested in mindfulness. They're interested in listening skills. Somehow they're wanting to put together the kind of the personal development and the social progress. <clears throat> so, Focusing style democracy slows down decision-making so that the whole being of each person has the potential to be involved in the process. Decisions are arrived at with a feeling of rightness so that action can have a felt continuity with the group as a whole. Decisions are grounded in experience so that each person can have a sense of, I can stand behind this. The decision isn't agreed just at a logical level or on a level of strategy, because if you agree to a decision only on that level, something's going to be left behind, silently maybe resisting every step of the way. So this is an attempt to have everything on board so the whole person's being can say, yeah, let's move forward with this. Now's the time. And you have a feeling inside that that, that is right. So social activists now seem aware of the necessity of taking into account the sphere of personal psychology and interpersonal dynamics. For me, it has always been crucial that the process of change, this is important to me, remains consistent with the ethical principles that motivate the change. Too often, the method and the intention are inconsistent. So this is an attempt to have a real continuity, a real consistency from the inside all the way out. So that we want a better world by modeling it. And the focusing helps with this. The gentle respect and primacy of a deep listening process makes focusing compatible with efforts to humanize society. Because as a practice, focusing already is that care for humanity. So there's a consistency there that I think is very important. <clears throat> And I would say that any attempt to replace one ideology with another ideology is no longer radical enough. We need to replace ideology with process. So there's two sections I wanna say just a little bit about. Um, So the first section is called, the person is already their own democratic community. <clears throat> so I would describe an individual person as a generative community, not a unified oneness. At any time, we have all various parts of ourselves. For example, parts that feel vulnerable, courageous parts, parts that resist, parts that feel insecure, aspects of ourselves that are ashamed or have been cast out into exile, aspects of ourselves that are manipulative, critical, defensive, 
each part, and I would say they're temporarily generated by our living situations, these parts, they aren't set parts, but each part is welcomed back with equality. A person is a democracy when she or he can openly listen to, not necessarily agree with, all parts of her or himself with equality and compassion. So my question is, can't this attitude in the inner world roll out in a continuous expansion to the largest human gatherings? Em embodied democracy values the process of listening to oneself and to each other in a way that feelings and opinions begin to naturally loosen and shift. It's the opposite of attempts to achieve agreement through the pressure to conform, subtle group oppression, rejection, attempts to compel, convince, control, or cajole, rather than listen carefully for the wisdom contained within each person in the group and within each part of each person. It is incredibly rare, in my experience, for us to actually listen without trying to convince in some way. <clears throat> in focusing, we know that doesn't work. So why would another, with another person would we think that works? In every decision, opinion, and thought, there is feeling. Even if the rational decision is correct, feelings need to be listened to or the decision will be half-hearted. We will leave some people behind or the action will never even be carried out. A feature of this kind of democracy is that it asks us to be open with ourselves and with other people to momentarily put down our presumptions, our technology, our project, our organization, our mission, so that for a moment we can directly contact ourselves and another person. Can we put this personal contact first before anything else? That's one of the most fundamental questions. And I would say we don't want to mediate the connection with another person through some abstract ideology. We don't want to reduce the person to only their point of view on something. <clears throat> so the second section is just what is embodied democracy or whatever you want to call it. Embodied democracy is first of all process-based. It is responsive, not a one-time act of voting. It does not set anything in stone. Decisions can be revisited. Voting can happen more than once. It does not impose upon the fluid feeling process of each person. That's primary. It is a continuous process of felt sensing that first of all requires a kind of inner democracy where there is no dictatorship of the I, no self-imposed concepts or outcomes no hijacking by one part of the whole system. So the rest of the person has to just tag along, silenced and subjected. <clears throat> From the atmosphere of radical acceptance of one's own body process that we do in focusing and probably many other processes, could we continue this inner democracy out towards others through deep listening? In this kind of democracy, listening is the basic act, not voting. Can we treat each part of another person with the same equality and respect that we try to treat each part of ourselves? Parts of a person can contradict and we don't impose some kind of resolution. One part can want something and the other part wants something totally different. Can we allow within and between diverse voices, valuing different points of view inside of ourselves and within our organizations or groups and pausing long enough for a right step to emerge?
Why should the radical acceptance and listening stance of focusing artificially end at me? Why should I bring that stance only to myself? Could it continue right from within my body out into my organizations, communities, and even further? It's a totally different form of democracy I'm talking about. There's no level of organization where we default to a dictatorship of the majority or accept that some expert's voice decides the matter without even hearing from the average person. It's a living democracy that never stops reopening concepts and roles and structures that often become subtly rigid and thus enslave the very life they were created to serve. So this continuous democracy always comes from the individual, whatever an individual is. Individual as a fluid and diverse community, not as some unified oneness. And this is a short quote from Jean Gendlin. <clears throat> and I'm almost finished. This is from 1987 from a paper I don't remember the title of. Um, but here, Jendon says, a, a genuinely political self experience is possible. Our deepest self responding also has political dimensions. There is a way to move from the merely inner psychology of self to a self understanding within the larger system. We can learn from how the women's movement moved from what seemed to be only psychological issues to politically understood issues. The inner was never just inner. When you consider it inner, you keep the tension within yourself and cut the experience off from the social change that it implies. So then I have just a question if you're a focuser, you might have this question. Can we upscale focusing? Because we often think of it as an individual process. I'm assuming that the focusing process can be a model for group functioning. I suggest that how we organize within our social and political communities can be an extension of the focusing process that we know individually and from partnerships. If for some reason we can't upscale focusing to these more social levels, why not? At what point does the bodily process break down as a guide to organizing? Or at what point do we lose faith in focusing and reach for conventional forms of organizing? This is another quote from Gendlin. This is not just our question alone. It is an exciting political question in the world. How can people organize themselves in a different way? The great movements of the 20th century all failed around this issue. Whatever their ideal and aims, the mode of organization was always the same. And that, not the ideals, determined what really happened. Focusing and everything that it opens should lead to a different mode for people to organize. Okay, so that's all that I wanted to say.